Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Dr. Nak, and we're going to go over our practice exam number one. And this is the non-graphic calculator portion. However, you may use a basic calculator for the entire exam. And this exam will cover materials from 7.1 to 7.8 and 8.1 to 8.6 from Sullivan's textbook. The actual exam will look just like this. So as long as you can do the practice exam, you are good to go. But anyways, let's get started. So number one, find an angle between 0 to 2 pi that is coterminal with negative 17 pi over 3. If you are still uncomfortable dealing with the radian measure, convert this into a degree measure. So let me see. 17 times pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So that's what? 1020 and if you want to know how many times you're going to have to revolve around the circle start subtracting 360 from it so what is that 660 so that will be one revolution and looks like we could go one more so this will be 300 so this means that we're going to have to go around the circle two revolutions plus 300 degrees picture and see what's going on don't forget our angle is negative so we're going to revolve two revolution in a negative direction so it'll be one revolution two revolution and then 300 Looks like this is going to be our terminal uh, terminal side. So let me just go like this. Um, this is like the ugliest circle ever, but you get the idea. So since we revolved two revolutions in 300 degrees, so that means what from here to here will be just 30 degrees. Okay, so I just want you to find just one angle that's coterminal co with that. So what will be the easiest one? Maybe from initial side to this side all right so that will be what uh, 60 degrees which is pi over 3. now if you want to get fancy you could go the other way around too so let me see you could go starting from here oops i need to learn how to draw a circle to go over there so that will be what theta b negative 5 pi over 3 so just give me one of them, that's, that's good enough for me. So I'm just going to write it as pi over 3, and I'll just put negative 5 pi over 3. Number 2, given cosine of theta is negative 3 fifth and theta is in quad 3, find the exact value of the following trig functions of theta, sine theta and tan of theta. Okay, so you know my thing, I am always like to draw the picture and just understand what's going on. So theta is in quad 3, so let me just write it like this. All right, so for sure your angle theta is going to lie in quad 3. And what? Sine is opposite over the height. Or you can think of it in terms of y over r. So here, let me see. You're given that cosine is negative 3 over 5. So that means what? Adjacent of the angle theta let me just write it as theta right here better have length uh, 3 so this will be length is 3 but this point will be negative 3 and r is going to be 5 that means length from here to here is 4 now if you want to do the x, y, and r, this point is the same thing as negative 3, comma, negative 4. All right, so keep that in mind, and let's just do this. So sine of theta, so first of all, sine in quadrant 3 is negative. So your answer better be negative. And those of you who like to use the triangle, as long as you know that your answer is negative, put, put that down, and you look at the triangle, and an opposite side of the angle theta has length 4, hypotenuse is 5. So that's going to be our answer. Now, those of you who like to use x, y, and r, your y value is negative 4, 
and R is 5. So you're still going to get the same answer. So our answer is negative 4 over 5. Let's go with the tan of theta. So if you like x, y, and r, this is nothing but y over x. This might be a little easier. So y is negative 4, x is negative 3. So our answer is going to be 4 thirds. Let me just box this one. So I'm going to write it 4 thirds. Number 3, the point 2 comma negative 5 is on the terminal side of angle theta in standard position. Find the exact value of the following trig function which is cosecant of theta and cotangent of theta. So again, let's draw a picture. Okay, so two comma negative five, so from here to here will be two, and y is negative five. Okay, so this point is 2 comma negative 5. All right, so since we're in quadrant 4, only positive guys are the cosine and 1 over cosine, which is secant. Now let's, um, let me just label this as theta. Now let's find the um, hypotenuse of the triangle. So let me just bring it over here. So our h is square root of, sorry, from here to here is 2, from here to here is 5, right? So you're going to have 4 plus 25. So this is going to be square root of 29. So our hypotenuse is square root of 29. Okay, I think we're good to go. So cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta. Okay, so which is? 1 over opposite over the height, if you want to think of it, which is same thing as height over opposite. And since in, we're in quadrant 4, our sine value is going to be negative. So cosecant is going to be negative. So as long as you know that, toss that negative. And then just look at the triangle itself and hypotenuse with that. That triangle is square root of 29 and opposite side is 5. So your answer is going to be negative square root of 29 over 5. Now, if you like to use x, y, and r, then this is precisely r over y. So, which will give us r is square root of 29 and y is negative 5. So we'll still get the same answer. Um, I'm not sure which way you want to do it. That's why I'm just doing it in both ways. So. Here is square root of 29 over 5. Now let's go with the cotangent. Okay, so the cotangent is 1 over tangent. Again, I'll just do this in both ways. So triangle would be opposite over adjacent, so which will be oops, adjacent over opposite. Now, if you like to use x, y, and r, this will be just x over y. So, whichever you want to do is okay, but since I already plot the x and a y value, let me just use that. So, our x is 2, y is negative 5, so our answer is going to be negative 2 fifth. Now, if you wanted to use the triangle, then in quad 4, tangent is negative. So, just toss the negative and look at the triangle itself and then adjacent side is 2, opposite side of, opposite side is 5. So you're still going to get negative 2 over 5. Let's go with number 4. If tan of theta equals to negative 3 and cosine is negative, find the exact value of cosecant of theta. Alright, so let's take one step at a time and analyze this. So first, we have tan of theta is negative 3, which is same thing as negative 3 over 1. Alright, so this is y over x, but the thing is, tangent is negative. So tan of theta is negative. So that implies that theta better be in quadrant, which one is that, 2 and a 4? Alright, so let me just write it out. Let me just go draw the picture here. Okay, so again, uh, tangent is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. Now, cosine of theta is negative, 
So that implies that theta is inside of, where is that? Quadrant two and quadrant three. All right, so since they both have to be um, negative, so what, which quadrant are we gonna take is quadrant number two. So we have this and this. So our theta is going to lie inside of quadrant number two. Okay, so let me just write it out. Therefore, theta is in quadrant number two. All right, so given that, let's uh, draw the triangle. So this is gonna be our angle theta. So the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, let me see. Our length is going to be from here to here. It's going to be three. And from here to here is going to be one. Or you can think of it as um, the y value is gonna be negative one. No, sorry, x value is gonna be negative one, sorry. And the y value is going to be three. So I could plot this as negative one comma three. Now, what is the um, the value of the hypotenuse? This will be square root of three squared plus one squared. So square root of 10. And here we go. So I think we're good to go. So therefore, cosecant of theta is one over sine of theta. And if you wanna use x, y, and r, that's fine. This is one over y over r, which is r over y. So this is gonna be root 10 over y value is three. So this is gonna be our answer. Moving right along, number five. If theta is pi over four, find the exact value of each expression. If the expression is undefined, so state. All right, so let's do this. So two tan of theta, so we're gonna replace the theta with pi over four. So this is what, two times tangent of pi over four is one. So our answer is going to be two, easy as that. All right, so now let's go with cosecant of two theta where theta is pi over four. So here you're gonna have cosecant of two times pi over four, which is cosecant of pi over two, which is same thing as one over sine of pi over two and I'm not sure which way you want to view this. I usually just look at the graph, but you can also uh, use the unit circle. I'm just going to draw the sine graph like this. Now, sine of pi over 2, the y value is going to be 1, so sine of pi over 2 is 1. So here I'm going to have 1 over 1, so our answer is going to be 1. Or if you just want to use the uh, the unit circle, that's fine as well. So how do you do that would be, okay, pretend that's a unit circle. Okay, so when you go pi over 2, so this is from pi over 2, and this point right here would be what? 0, comma 1. Now, since sine is y over r, and r is 1 in this case, so you're still going to have 1 over 1 equal so which is, whichever you want to use it is okay. So I'm just going to write this guy as 1. Number 6, find the exact value of the following. Sine of 510 degrees. Okay, so picture time. Let's just find out where that 510 degrees is going to lie in. So let me see, from here to here is 360. And then I need to get to 510, so need to pass here and go 60 degrees more and change the color here so this looks like this is going to be our terminal side let me extend this axis a little bit all right so if i draw the triangle our reference angle is going to be 30 degrees okay so um this is going to be this is same thing as let me see Take a look at this one. Sine is positive in quadrant two. So here you're gonna have positive sine of the reference angle of 510, which is 30 degrees. So which is just one half. All right, now if you wanna do this in terms of x, y, and r, so sine is what? 
y over r and this point right here is sorry let me just bring it over here this point is negative square root of 3 comma 1 so the y is 1 r is 2 so our answer is still going to be 1 half part b cosine of negative 13 pi over 4. I usually don't like to deal with the negative, so remember cosine is an even function. So the cosine of negative 13 pi over 4 is going to be the same thing as cosine of positive 13 pi over 4. You don't have to do it this way. You could just revolve 13 pi over 4 units uh, clockwise if you like. You're still going to get the same answer. All right, so let's first compute how much is 13 pi over 4. That's the same thing as 13 times 45 degrees, which is what? Mm, 585. And I'm going to subtract 360 from it. And you're going to have 225 degrees. So it looks like we're going to have to revolve one revolution and add 225 degrees on top of it. So... one revolution and 225 so it looks like this is going to be our terminal point so this uh, let me see so from here to here is one length is one from here to here is square root of 2 so this point right here is x is negative 1 and also y is negative 1 okay so let's keep going so cosine of 13 pi over 4 is same thing as let me just write it like this now if you want to use the reference angle then notice that cosine is negative in quadrant 3 so here what you're going to have is negative cosine of its reference angle which will be pi over 4 so in this case you're going to have negative root 2 over 2 for the answer now if you want to use um, x y and r that's fine as well the answer is negative root 2 over 2 See, tangent of 8 pi over 3. So let me just first jot down where the 8 pi over 3 is going to lie in by converting this into a degree measure. So pi over 3 is 60 degrees. 8 times 60 is 480. And looks like we're going to have to go one revolution and then add 120 degrees to it. All right, picture time. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. One revolution. And then what did I say? 120 degrees. So it looks like this is going to be our terminal point. All right. So now this angle right here is going to be pi over 3 or 60 degrees so here the length are 1 root 3 and a 2 keep oh that's a 2 sorry so this is 2 so this point right here is x is negative 1 and y is square root of 3 those of you who want to use uh, x y and r now if you just want to use the reference angle Notice that tangent is negative in quadrant 2. So reference angle theorem says, so this is going to be the same as negative tan of pi over 3. Okay, so which is what? Negative square root of 3 over 1, which is negative it's just square root of 3. Now, if you want to use um, x, y, and r, that's fine because tangent oops sorry so the tangent is y over x so y value is 
root 3, and x is negative 1, so you still get negative root 3. So that's going to be our answer. E, cosecant of 300 degrees. So drawing the picture. All right, so 300 degrees will be maybe right here. Okay, so this angle right here is 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. So keep that in mind. Oh, let me just draw this as a triangle. So the length is going to be 1, 2, and square root of 3. Just in case you want to use x, y, and r, this is x is 1 and y is negative root 3. Okay, so let's do this. So cosecant is same thing as 1 over sine. Now, if you want to use the reference angle theorem, notice that sine is negative in quadrant 4, so for sure you're going to have negative 1 over. Now, uh, the reference angle for the 300 is 60 degrees. Okay, so this is same thing as negative 1 over what's the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. I'm running out of room, so this is negative uh, 2 over root 3. Always rationalize the denominator. So our answer is going to be negative 2 root 3 over 3. Or if you want to use x, y, and r, this is same thing as r over y. And r is 2 and y is negative root 3. So if you rationalize it, you still get the same answer. Part E, secant of 11 pi over 4. So let's first jot down where the angle is going to be. So you can divide this into, if it's pi over 4, into equal pieces like that. So 11 pi over 4 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Here we go. So, all right, of course, you can um, convert it into a degree measure if you like, but anyways, our reference angle here is going to be pi over 4, keep that in mind, and just in case you want to use x, y, and r, can you see this, That's, I meant 1, length is 1, hypotenuse is square root of 2, so this point right here is x is negative 1, and y is 1. Alright, so now notice that secant is same thing as 1 over cosine. Okay, now in quadrant 2, cosine is negative. So this is same thing as 1 over negative cosine of its reference angle, which is just pi over 4. So here we're going to have, um, let me toss the negative on the top, negative 1 over rat 2 over 2, so which is negative 2 over rat 2. Rationalize. And it looks like, let me just write it over here, sorry, I'm running out of room. So this means what we're going to have, negative 2 root 2 over 2, kill the 2's, so negative square root of 2 is going to be the answer. Now, if you want to use um, x, y, and r, it might be a little quicker for this one. So secant is 1 over cosine, so here you're going to have r over x. So our r is square root of, what is that, square root of 2. And then x is negative 1, so here you're going to have negative square root of 2 as well. Number 7, graphing time. Graph the function y equals cotangent of pi over 4x, show at least one cycle, and scale both x and y axis, label all key points, including asymptotes, if any. Okay, so first, let's start out with the mother graph. 
our mother graph is y equals cotangent of x. So make sure to memorize the graph of cotangent and also tangent. Okay, now cotangent has vertical asymptotes and a pi and a 2 pi. And cotangent goes this way. Here I drew the graph from 0 to 2 pi. Now we're going to have to shift our interval. So how do you do that will be this. Okay, do you remember what goes inside? That will be the argument of cotangent, which is pi over 4x. And all you have to do is solve for x from there. So here I should multiply by 4 over pi. Then we're going to get 0 less than x less than 8. Okay, so we're still going to start at 0, but instead of a 2 pi, we're going to end up at numerical value of 8. Now to get the increments, all you have to do is take the end point minus the beginning point and divide that by 4. So here what we're going to get is what? 2. So that each increment is going to be 2. Alright, so let me just draw this directly below. Okay, so instead of 2 pi, we're going to have 8. That means 4, increment is 2, so this is it. Now we're still going to have a vertical asymptote at 4 and 8 in this case. And the graph that we're looking for is going to go this way. Okay, so I want you to label all the key points. So this will be 2, 0 and 6, 0. And if, as long as you label 4 and 8 as a vertical asymptote, that's totally fine. So this is our graph of y equals cotangent of pi over 4x. And we're done. Okay, number 8. Graph the function y equals negative 3 sine of 2x plus pi over 2. Show at least one cycle. Scale both the x and the y axis. Label all key points. Okay, so let's get started on this one. So let's first start out with the mother graph. That says mother. Sorry, my handwriting is getting worse. Mother graph is y equals sine of x. And I'm just going to draw the picture from 0 to 2 pi. That's one cycle. Okay, so that's y equals sine of x. Now, amplitude for this problem is going to be 3 because absolute value of this will be 3. So let me just write it out. Amplitude is going to be 3. So instead of 1 and negative 1, you're going to end up with 3 and a negative 3. All right, but the thing is, this is um, we need to flip this mother graph because we have negative sine function. So let me just take care of that first. The ordering doesn't matter. Whichever you want to do it is okay. But I usually forget to flip, flip the graph. So let me go with 1, negative 1. Is that right? Okay. So this is the graph of y equals negative sine of x. All right, so let's go from here. Amplitude is 3. Now we're going to have to shift our interval. So how do you do that is we graph this from 0 to 2 pi. What goes in between is 2x plus pi over 2. All you have to do is solve for x from here. So subtract pi over 2. Then what do we get? 
negative pi over 2 less than or equal to 2x and less than or equal to 3 pi over 2. Okay, now dividing by 2 or multiplying by 1 half to the whole entire thing, it looks like what we're going to get is negative pi over 4 less than or equal to x and less than or equal to 3 pi over 4. Okay, let me box that. So this means that instead of starting from zero, you're gonna, that zero point is gonna become negative pi over four, and instead of a two pi, that spot's gonna get replaced by three pi over four. So again, I'm gonna draw, try to draw this directly below, but since we're gonna have to go towards the negative side, let me just, um, just gonna try to draw just directly below. All right, so, you're going to start from negative pi over 4 instead of a 0. And at the end, you're going to have 3 pi over 4. Now, what is the increment? All you have to do is take the end point minus the beginning point and divide that whole thing by 4. So numerator, what do we get? 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. So that's what is that? 4 pi over 4 dividing by 4. That's what? Pi over 4? Okay, so each increment is going to be pi over 4. So from here to here, you need to add pi over 4 to uh, negative pi over 4. So this point is going to be 0 and then pi over 4 and 2 pi over 4, which is going to be pi over 2. Okay, now let me just... Um, draw it like this since that's the zero so don't forget our amplitude is going to be three and a negative three and all you have to do is jot down the same points that you see on the picture above so you're going to start from here and you're going to dip down to negative three i'm going to go up here here and i'm going to end up down here so Okay, so this is going to be our graph of y equals negative 3 sine of 2x plus pi over 2. And let's label all the key points. Well, the key points are negative pi over 4 comma 0. And this point right here is 0 comma negative 3. Right here is pi over 4 comma 0. That's a 4, sorry. And here you're going to get pi over 2, comma, 3. This point is 3 pi over 4, comma, 0. And that's all you have to do. Number 9. Find the exact value of each of the following expressions. Okay, so let's go with part A. Sine inverse of cosine of negative 7 pi over 6. So first of all, we know how to compute cosine of negative 7 pi over 6. So let's compute that one first. So let me just take this over here. Now, cosine of negative 7 pi over 6. Now, remember, cosine is an even function. So this is the same thing as cosine of 7 pi over 6. I use that property quite a bit because I just don't like to deal with negative angles so much. But anyways, let me just jot down where the 7 pi over 6 is going to be. I believe it's in quadrant 2. Okay, so 7 pi over 6, that means our reference angle is going to be pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. Alright, so... From here to here is 7 pi over 6. And then our reference angle here is pi over 6. Now, cosine is negative in quadrant number 2. So if you want to use the reference angle theorem, this is the same thing as negative cosine of pi over 6, which is negative root 3 over 2. 
Okay, so keep that in mind. So what we just did was we computed cosine of negative 7 pi over 6, which is the argument of sine inverse. So this value is going to go in here. Okay, so let's keep going. So therefore, this is going to be the same as sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2. So let me just call this theta because this is what we're looking for. So this implies that sine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. And remember, theta is between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Let me draw a picture. Okay, now sine is negative in quadrant 3 and a 4, but your theta better be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that means quad 3 is out, your theta is going to lie in quadrant number 4. Okay, so um, if you want to use x, y, and r, that's fine. So sine is what? Sine is y over r so y value is going to be negative root 3 and r is going to be 1 so no r is going to be 2 sorry about that so that we're gonna have this situation going on so that means this point right here is 1 comma negative square root of 3. Okay, so can you tell me what the theta value is going to be then? So this is going to be our angle theta. It's going to be negative uh, 60 degrees, so that will be negative pi over 3. So because remember, theta is going from this way to this way. Oh my gosh, can you even see that? I'm so sorry. So here, our theta is negative pi over 3, and that's going to be our answer. Let me just write it directly below. I mean, above. I don't even know what's below and above anymore. I'm getting tired. How are you guys doing up to here? Hopefully you're doing okay. Feel free to pause the video anytime you like, okay? All right, so let's go with part B. Secant of tangent inverse of one half. First, let me start off with, let's call this guy theta. So let theta be tan inverse of one half. So that implies that tan of theta is one half and theta is between open negative pi over two to pi over two open. Okay, now let's draw the picture out. Okay, now tangent is positive. So that means, let me just write this. Okay, so tangent is positive in quadrant 3 and a 1, but theta must be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so quadrant 3 is out. So our angle theta is going to lie in quadrant number 1. And let me change the color here. Now, this means what then? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so the opposite side has length 1. And then adjacent side has length 2. So that means this length right here, let me go with r equals square root of uh, 1 squared plus 2 squared which is square root of 5, that's a 5, sorry. So this is the length that we get. So this is not uh, some familiar triangle, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go with, let's go back to the problem. So what do we have now? So this is same thing as secant of theta. So all you have to do is compute secant of theta. So secant is 1 over cosine. 
Now, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent side is 2. Hype is root 5. So our answer is going to be root 5 over 2. Now, if you want to use x, y, and r, that's fine because this point is 2, 1. So you're still going to get the same exact answer. So here, our answer is square root of 5 over 2. Let me just box all the answers in red so you can tell which is the answer and which isn't. Let's go with number 10. Given that cosine of theta is negative root 6 over 3, theta between pi over 2 to pi, find the exact value of the following. Okay, so let's first draw out the picture as always and see what's going on. Now, notice that cosine is negative. So cosine is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. But theta is between pi over 2 to pi. So here is pi over 2 and a pi. So this one's out. So our theta is going to lie inside of quadrant number 2. So let me just draw up the picture. Okay, so let's point right here. Cosine is adjacent over height, so length from here to here is square root of 6. Length here is 3, so that means what is this value right here? Uh, so this is, let's call that y. y equals the square root of 3 squared minus root 6 squared, so it's 9 minus 6, which is square root of 3. So this length is square root of 3. So this point right here is negative root 6, comma, root 3, if you want to use x, y, and r. Okay, so find the exact value of the each of the following. So now let's go with find sine of 2 theta. So first, you're going to have to memorize the formula. I'm going to write that in red. Sine of 2 theta, please memorize this, is 2 sine cosine. Okay, so all you have to do is look at that triangle and then compute the sine of theta and cosine of theta. Okay, so let's go. So this is going to be 2 times, now sine of theta is root 3 over 3. And cosine of theta is negative root 6 over 3. So what do we get here? negative 2 root 18 whole thing over 9 always simplify your answer all the way square root of 18 is 3 root 2 so here you're going to have negative 6 root 2 over 9 i guess i could have canceled a 3 and a 9 in a previous step but oh well but regardless here what we're going to get is negative 2 root 2 whole thing over 3 so that's our answer. Okay, so next one, find cosine of theta over 2. So again, you're going to have to memorize the formula since I feel like I'm going to run out of room. So let's, let me just write it above. So cosine of theta over 2, this is given by plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta, whole thing dividing by 2. Now, plus or minus is determined by the quadrant of the angle theta over 2. Okay, so I could just write that out. So, so this guy is determined by the quadrant of the angle theta over 2. All right, so let's get started on this. Now, you were given that theta was between negative pi over 2 to pi. All right, so let me just make myself a note. So note that OK, 
Okay, so let's determine, given that, let's determine where the angle theta over 2 is going to be in. So how do you get theta over 2? Multiply everything by 1 half. Then it looks like our theta over 2 is going to be between pi over 4 and pi over 2. Okay, keep that in mind. Let me just draw a picture over here. So everything's going to be positive in quadrant 1, looks like, because look, pi over 4, so it's 45 degrees, so this is pi over 4, and this is pi over 2. So in this case, our cosine of theta over 2 is going to be positive. Okay, so keep that in mind. So therefore, we're only going to take, let me just bring it over here, we're only going to take the positive side of it. So you're going to have positive square root of 1 plus cosine of theta, whole thing over 2. Now cosine of theta was negative root 6 over 3. That's a 3. Now whole thing dividing by 2. Now we're going to have to simplify this. So how about this? Multiply top and the bottom by 3. Then what do we get here? We're going to have square root of 3 minus root 6. Whole thing over 6. Whole entire thing square rooted. So this is simplified enough. So I'm going to box that for the answer. So that therefore the answer is square root of 3 minus root 6 all over 6. Number 11, solve the equation on the interval 0 to 2 pi. Express your answer in exact form. So we're given 1 plus sine theta equals 2 cosine square of theta. Now, typical trick would be to either convert everything in terms of a sine or the cosine so we can make a quadratic equation out of it. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert cosine square of theta, not convert, I'm going to replace that with 1 minus sine square of theta. So first step, this is my first step, and so that implies that we have 1 plus sine of theta is 2 minus 2 sine square of theta. Now let's bring everybody on the left hand side and set the right hand side equal to 0. Then here what we're going to get is 2 sine square of theta plus sine of theta minus 1 equals to 0. So let y equals sine of theta then we can rewrite this equation as 2y squared plus 2y minus 1 equals to 0. And this should factor out nicely. So here you're going to have 2y and a y, 1 and 1, the signs negative and positive. Okay, so that implies that either 2y minus 1 is 0 or y plus 1 is 0. So that implies that y is positive 1 half or y is negative 1 but y was sine of theta. So I'm going to replace that with sine of theta equals positive 1 half and sine of theta equals negative 1. Okay, so first let's work on sine of theta equals positive one half, so if sine's positive, then theta is in either quadrant one or in quadrant two. Okay, so let me draw that out. Sine is opposite over height. Let me just write down.
down the length that's one two root three and this point right here if you want to use x y naught this is root three comma one and this point right here is negative root three comma one okay so our angle theta from here to here will be pi over six And from, I don't know if you can see this from here to here, would be 5 pi over 6. Okay, so therefore, looks like our theta value is going to be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, now let's go with the sine of theta equals the negative 1. So... You can just look at the graph or you can just look at the units, uh, unit circle, but I, oh, I pretend that's a straight line. So sine graph is going to go like this. So sine of theta equals to negative 1 when theta equals 3 pi over 2. So in this case, our theta is going to be forgot to put the one there it says negative one right here three pi over two now if you want to use the unit circle that's fine as well so the radius is one and the sine of theta equals the negative one this is same thing as y over r but r, r is one already so that implies that y is negative one So where is my y equals negative 1? That will be right here. So our angle theta is going to be 3 pi over 2 as well. Okay, so it looks like our solution is, are going to be pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 3 pi over 2. So this is going to be our answer. Number 12, to find the exact value of the following under the given conditions. Tan of alpha is negative 4 thirds. Alpha is between negative pi over 2 to pi. Cosine of beta is positive 1 half. And beta is between 0 to pi over 2. So let's draw out the situation separately. So first, let me deal with the alpha. So tangent is negative. Tangent is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. I'll write it. I'll draw the picture out. But the thing is, theta is between pi over 2 to pi. So that means this guy's out. So that implies that our theta is going to lie in quadrant number 2. Okay, so how far do we need to go? So tangent is y over x. So it looks like if I plot the point here. So this is our angle alpha, the length are, so this, this point right here is negative 3, but the length is 3, and this is going to be 4, that means this is going to be 5, and this point right here is negative 3, 4. Alright, so that's one picture. Now let's deal with the cosine of beta. Now, Cosine of beta is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Okay, picture time. So quad 1 or quad 4, but... 
beta is between 0 to pi over 2. So quadrant 4 is out. Okay, so let's draw the uh, triangle here. This is going to be our angle beta. The length R, 1, root 3, and this side is going to be 2. So this point right here is 1 comma square root of 3. Okay, so keep that in mind and let's do some problems. So first, find the sine of alpha plus beta. So you're going to have to memorize this one. Let me write that in red. All right, sine alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine of alpha and sine of beta. Okay, so all you have to do is look at the two triangles above. Okay, so first let's go with the sine of alpha. Sine of alpha is 4 over 5. And cosine of beta is 1 half. Plus, now cosine of alpha is negative 3 over 5. And then sine of beta is root 3 over 2. So this looks like we're going to have 4 over 10 minus 3 root 3 over 10 combined. So our answer is going to be 4 minus 3 root 3 whole thing over 10. B, cosine of alpha minus beta. All right, so again, you're going to have to memorize this. Cosine of alpha minus beta. This is cosine alpha cosine of beta and sine changes plus sine alpha and sine of beta. Okay, I think we're good to go. So cosine of alpha is negative 3 over 5. Cosine of beta is 1 half plus sine of alpha is 4 over 5 and sine of beta is root 3 over 2. So this is negative 3 over 10 plus 4 root 3 over 10. So what do we got? Negative 3 plus 4 root 3 all over 10. Let me write that above. So that's going to be our answer. Okay, so now let's go with the next one. Tangent of alpha minus beta formula is tan alpha minus tan beta whole thing divided by 1 plus tan alpha and tan beta okay so what do we get here looks like we're gonna have tan of alpha is negative 4 thirds minus tan of beta is root 3 over 1 whole thing over 1 plus negative 4 thirds and root 3 over 1. All right, so then this is going to get give us what? Negative 4 over 3 minus root 3 over 1, whole thing over 1 minus 4 root 3 over 3. Yikes, ugly, but we can we got this. So let's multiply the top and bottom by 3 just to get rid of the fractions. Let me just bring it over here. So if I do that, then what do we have here? Negative four minus square root of three. Hold on, three square root of three. Sorry, I'm getting tired. Now whole thing over three minus four root three. Okay, now multiply by the conjugate. Okay, 
So let's multiply it out. What do we get here? Hold on. Negative 12 minus 16 square root of 3 minus 9 square root of 3 minus 12 times 3. Whole thing over 9 minus 16 times 3. Okay, so this is going to give us, what in the world is that? Um, negative 48 and then minus 16, 9, 25 root 3. That's a 3. Whole thing over negative 39. Now factor the negative out from the top. There's too many negatives going on. So if I factor that, you're going to have negative 48 plus 25 root 3, whole thing over negative 39. So the negative, you can cancel it out. So our answer is going to be 48 plus 25 root 3, whole thing over 39. And here's our answer. Moving right along, number 13, established identity. Now make sure to show every single step. Do not skip any steps if you want a full credit. So let me just take a look at this and then obviously I'm going to start from the left hand side. I'm going to write down the problem again. Cosine of x minus y over sine x cosine y. Okay, so first let's apply the formula for the cosine of x minus y. So that's cosine of x, cosine of y, sine changes to plus, sine of x, and then sine of y. Now whole thing over sine of x, and then cosine of y. Okay, so now... Remember this trick, if I have a plus b all over c, this is a over c plus b over c. So let's split this um, expression into two. So here what we're going to get is cosine of x, cosine of y, whole thing over sine x, cosine of y, and then plus sine x, sine y, whole thing over sine of x and then cosine of y all looking good all right so what can i kill 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 the cosine kill kill the sine all right so what do we got left over cosine of x over sine of x plus sine y over the cosine y which is cotangent of x plus tangent of y, which is precisely what we wanted to prove. So we're done. Notice that I wrote down every single step, even when I have to cancel the cosine and sine. Make sure to show every single step. Number 14, established identity. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the left hand side. What did I put plus there? Sorry about that. Okay, so let's start out from the left hand side. Now, hmm, what can we do here? Cosine squared. Let's try to use the Pythagorean identity to convert that into a sine squared and see where it's going to take us. So let me just write it. As note, sine square of theta plus cosine squared equals to 1. So cosine square of theta is 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to replace that. So here what we're going to get is 1 minus 1 minus sine squared. Whole thing over 1 plus sine of theta. All right. So now what, right? Hmm. Ah, 
Do you guys remember this property? If I had 1 minus x squared, isn't this same thing as 1 minus x times 1 plus x? Difference of two squares. So instead of a x, I'm going to have sine of theta. So if I have 1 minus sine square of theta, then here you're going to have 1 minus sine of theta and then 1 plus sine of theta. Okay, so let me replace that. Then looks like we're going to get 1 minus 1 minus sine theta and then 1 plus sine of theta. Whole thing over 1 plus sine of theta. Okay, so now let's see we can cancel these out. Ah, we're almost home. So what do we have? We have 1 minus 1 minus sine of theta, which is 1 minus 1 plus sine of theta, which is 0 plus sine of theta, which is sine of theta, which is the right-hand side. Whew. How are you guys doing up to here? Make sure to memorize all these identities because your exam is going to look just like this, okay? Okay, number 15, let's prove that cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus theta equals sine of theta. I know this is one of the properties that we've learned in the, one of the section, but don't say that, oh, this is true by section su such and such. You actually have to prove it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the left-hand side. All right, so let's use this formula, cosine of alpha plus beta, cosine alpha, cosine beta, sine changes, sine alpha, sine theta, I mean beta, sorry. All right, so let me rewrite this as cosine of 3 pi over 2 times cosine of theta minus sine of 3 pi over 2 and sine of theta. Okay, so cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's 0. So we got 0 times cosine of theta minus, now sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and then you're going to have sine of theta. So this is 0 minus minus 1 sine of theta, so this is just going to be 0 plus sine of theta, which is sine of theta. This is exactly what we needed to prove. Okay, number 16, prove that cosine of 2x over 1 plus sine 2x equals cotan of x minus 1 over cotan of x plus 1. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left-hand side again and see where that's going to take us. Okay, so, hmm, what the heck can we use? So obviously, we're probably going to have to use one of the identities for cosine of 2x. So let me just write down. Cosine of 2x have, has three different identities. One of them is 2 cosine square of x minus 1. Another one is cosine squared minus sine squared. And another one is 1 minus 2 sine squared. Yikes. All right, so, hmm, which one can we choose? Um, let's try to use the second one. The reason why I want to use that is because I can factor cosine squared minus sine squared uh, into cosine minus sine times cosine plus sine. So, that might take us somewhere. 
So keep that in mind. And if it fails, we'll just cry together and try something else, and that's all. All right, so cosine of uh, 2x. Okay, I just replaced it. Now, sine of 2x, let's use identity for that as well. Now, sine of 2x, just one formula. That's 2 sine of x and then cosine of x. So let me just replace that. So you're going to have cosine square of x minus sine square of x over 1 plus 2 sine cosine. All right, so let's see. So another note that if I have a squared minus b squared, this is a plus b and then a minus b. So here, instead of a, we're going to have cosine and b is going to be sine. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to factor the numerator into cosine of x plus sine of x and then cosine of x minus sine of x. Whole thing over 1 plus 2 sine of x and then cosine of x. Huh. Doesn't really look like uh, it's going to take us anywhere. Um, how about this? Let's replace that 1 in the denominator with sine squared plus cosine squared. You see why in a minute. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this 1 and oops. This is just a trick on algebraic manipulation. So here what we're going to get is cosine of x plus sine of x, cosine of x minus sine of x, whole thing over sine square of x plus the cosine square of x, and then plus 2 sine of x, and then cosine of x. Do you see why I just did that? Because look, let me see, let me just write it in red. Now, if I had something like a plus b squared, right? So this is what? a squared plus 2ab and then plus b squared. Look at the denominator. Do you see that? I can rewrite this whole thing as sine square of x and then plus 2 sine x, cosine x, and then plus cosine square of x. Oh, I could just rearrange the ordering. So if I think of a is sine of x and b to be cosine of x, then this is going to be sine square of x plus 2 sine cosine. And then plus b squared is going to be cosine squared of x. So that's exactly what we have in the denominator. But when we do that, that's whole, that whole quantity is going to become a plus b whole quantity squared, which is sine of x plus cosine of x whole quantity squared. So let me just try to rewrite it. So here you're going to have cosine of x plus sine of x cosine of x minus sine. And this whole thing over sine of x plus cosine of x whole quantity squared. That means that, remember, sine of x plus cosine of x whole quantity squared is sine of x plus cosine of x times by sine of x plus cosine of x. So I could cancel out one of the, one of the factor of sine x plus cosine of x. So what we have right now is cosine of x minus sine of x whole thing over sine of x and then plus the cosine of x. Okay, let me go into the next page and continue on. 
Okay, so, so far we have from the previous page, let me just copy down what, how much we got so far. We got cosine of x minus sine of x over sine of x plus the cosine of x. Okay, mm, what the heck were we trying to prove again? Um, let me just go back. Oh yes, we're trying to prove that this whole craziness is cotan of x minus 1 over cotan of x plus 1. All right, let's keep that in mind. All right, so now what? Hmm. Aha, how about this? Let's multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over sine of x. Okay, then here what we're going to get is cosine over sine minus sine over sine. Whole thing over sine over sine plus cosine over sine. Yes! Do you guys see the light on, in the, at the end of the tunnel? I do. All right, ready? Cosine over sine is cotangent and sine over sine is 1. Whole thing over 1 plus cotan of x. Well, 1 plus cotan of x is is same thing as cotan of x plus 1. So let me just rewrite it. You don't necessarily have to do this step. But anyways, this is exactly what we needed to show. Oh my gosh, that was a little bit brutal, wasn't it? But look at it. We got through it, and I believe this is the end of this uh, practice exam for the non-calculator portion. Um, make sure to go over this as many times as you can since your exam gonna look just like this and I just wanted to say good job and when you go take take the test make sure to be confident be confident tell yourself that you can do it because if I can do it you can do it trust me all right but anyways go kick some butt on the test and I will be talking to you soon